going to use a bit of that green. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to pop a bit of it up in there. There was some green just up into that part. Leave some of the other colour showing as well. is just down in there so I'm just going to use cadmium yellow with the green and make it a bit brighter and then just now and again I'm just going to touch a little bush just in there now and again maybe a smidgen more of the green to that on there only small but they are there so I like to get them in now, back to my darks again sometimes I just pull up a bit extra there Makes it look like individual evergreens that you can see. Just, just like that, you see them there? Again, the dark lavender. And, uh, this colour that I've put in here is merging lovely with this side. See it just in there, it seems to be merging really good with this side, but it's not merging too good with that side because I need a bit more shadow colour. So, what I mean is, I have it coming from there and actually blending gently up into that. I want a bit of white rock showing there. That's good. That's more like it. Trust. Yeah, what a fun painting to do. I really am enjoying doing this. Scotland's just so beautiful and so inspiring. You notice how I'm just doing little angles like that and then tapping. And then I'll just go that way and tap the opposite direction. Now and again and put little cracks in the fissures. The geology of this area of Scotland is absolutely amazing. It's, it's really, really had a lot of erosion from like glacier that there was a glacier once in this crevice and as it's actually retreated it's gouged out all the mountains it's usually what happens now I've got a brush with the green on so just for now I'm going to get some more cadmium yellow a little bit of phthalo blue just to make that green and then a bit of black the dark and then I can just get a bit more of the light so I've made a dark green there more or less like a sap green that I've made and then just to the side of it I'm going to mix a bright green that's the one now this bright green that we're going to use first I just want to go in underneath here it's a really nice field. It'll mix with the liquid white, you see. 
when it mixes with it first down here, where I, I drew a line where this beach starts, I'm just going to follow that line basically with this green. Just uh, give me a guide. I'm always giving myself a guide of where I'm going. That's why I, pe that's why I drew on with this one, the uh, pencil. Drew some pencil to make it so I could always see where I'm going. So that green goes in there. Once you start running out of colour and it starts mixing with that liquid white in a nice way, I'm actually going to come above just into there and it'll really work well. Same here, I just want to do the, the part above the waterline first. And then just brush up into that a bit. Slash a little bank in this one. Now, it's getting really light, you see, so what I'll do is I'll just go, this one goes just above that edge, and then follows through, see that? Now you pick up that colour, so I'll wipe that off, go back into my green again, and then same over in here, I want it to come from there. Right the way through. But I want it to stand out, you see, that's why I did this. I wanted it to stand out from the background a lot. And blend that into it. Now that actually goes behind this hill. So uh, what I'm doing, I'm just going to allow that to come up slightly more and then when I paint this hill in, I'll come back with my yellow ochre and green. Let me show you that. See how it's raw there? Once it starts getting, stop being raw because it's mixing with the liquid white, I'll go back just in there and I can create that edge for this. See? And put that in front of the grass. The grass is behind this layer. So by doing that, we've got this layer in front of that grass. And it gives you, it creates depth. These layers create depth. So that's a mixture of green on here, green, and the yellow water, which I'm using. I'm just going to block some of that colour in first. Get a bit of something in there. Bit more yellow water to that, maybe. Just again, following those angles. This is just a base coat at the moment. I'm just trying to get some of that colour in, so it's got the hue of what I'm after in there. That's good. Now, I'm going to go straight back to my green again because I actually want to match this side with that side so this is a bit darker, especially, especially on the waterline. Now this layer is in front of this layer, that's further back. Keep it lighter on the top, a bit lighter, and then the shadows will be lower down. See, I'm just pressing with a bit more pressure there, so that that shadow for the bank is in there. Now I'll do the same thing at that side. Put this little shadow in. Do the same thing at this side. Touch. Yeah. 
and then blend that shadow back. So free and easy. It'd be too cold to actually go up there at that time of year and paint. Your fingers would have dropped off within like two or three minutes. Guaranteed. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't have attempted it, I'll tell you that. Not a chance. Again I'm just gonna put a bit more of a darker edge. Just in there, shadow. It's actually got a little lip you see. Like a little lip that's going over it there. Cool. Same again this side. Only difference I wanna as it comes closer to me. I'm going to go lower down, there, see that's coming closer to me, just there, and then I can blend that up into the green, and create a little banking with that dark as well, but a bit of banking going on. shadow under it. This is not a steep banking over in this area. Right, back to my green. Shadows here and there. there. Same up in there, just a few little shadows. A couple of trees sat side of this little bank in as well as on the point. But layer after layer after layer. Just in there at the bottom of that. I'm actually just come across. Shadow in for bottom. Now, bits of green going on up in there. Just while I've got this on my brush, I'm just going to apply some of that up into there with the corner of the fan brush. So all I'm doing, I'm just using the corner, not coming above it. I'm just stick on washing. We're going to put some dark areas in as well. I wanted a few grassy bits. There's like dead grass in between the green grass. That's why you get this lovely colour on tops of mountains and stuff. Using the full width of the fan brush and stippling. I'm following the angle as I'm stippling. Very important to follow the angles of the mountains that you actually paint in. Right. Now, just over the top of that, I'm just going to use titanium white, yellow ochre, mixed together, titanium white, yellow ochre. See that? And then stipple. There's a lot of paint on this brush now. Now just up in here, I'm going to just tap some of that colour. Just using the corner sometimes. That's it. I want a lot of variety, so I'll be using just the raw 
which is like so, you see that? The raw yellow water. And see how loosely I'm tapping that in. And then maybe a bit of dark sienna. See look there is the dark sienna. Back into the yellow water and white. Go over that. Now we'll get rid of these smiley faces now just by tapping in between them. And we'll stop looking like smiley faces and we'll start looking like grass. But grass is a bit of depth. You need them dark bits in there to have that depth. Sometimes we'll tap that colour right in in certain areas, like so. And then I'll come over the top with some lighter colours. far from time for me to start stepping back and having a look. Now the grass starts at the base of these hills so that's good. You see even some dead bracken and stuff that's why you get a lot of these colours. Uh, in fact just here and there I might just tap a bit of that in. Just in there as well. Now these rocks I'm going to use a knife and come back to that. So I think my next task is going to be the river. So that's what I'm going to be concentrating on after this. Now I can just get a bit of dark Van Dyke Brown on the same brush that I was just using. So all we've got that, that colour in the yellow water and the white. But I'm just putting straight Van Dyke Brown into it so that here and there I can actually get some nice shadow going on. Not too much, just enough. See that? It'll be a bit gentle and it will just stand out enough to give you a bit of foreground darkness. stand out and what's behind. I don't do it too dark. So I'm, as I'm running out of pain, I'm able to tap more often. Right. Now in certain areas I want to be darker than others. So you've got that shadow just in there. Another shadow just in there. As we come in closer to us, I want to see more and more shadows. And they'll get darker and darker as well. See ya? As you're running out of paint, you can go back into them dark areas again. And just sit them down a bit. You can go over this with highlights afterwards as well if you like. It's not a problem. You can go back and forwards. Highlight shadow, highlight shadow. What I'll do is it'll just give you some depth in your grass by doing this. Need some bit brighter, some areas. So now I just want to actually go at the base of that and just pull. In fact, I won't use that brush. I'll use a clean brush with a clean brush because the I don't want to lose this green colour, this nice green colour that we've got. So what I'll do is I'll just use this clean brush and go underneath that. Then uh, in the half. Good thing about wet on wet as well, you can actually lay your grass out just like so. And A 
add some more green underneath that eventually. Under this area. That's why not do it now. Should we just have enough time? No, one brush. I'll highlight over this now because I've let this go darker I will actually highlight over it with brighter coloured grass you know like we've got there up here it's brighter in there we'll stick some little brighter spots 